here to help us introduce and interview our next guest back again, the master of fun and wonder, Mr. Robert Meyer Burnett. Are you there, Rob? I am here. I'm, I'm very excited to introduce our next guest because as people might not know, or if they do know, America just returned to space. NASA and SpaceX launched the Dragon Crew capsule. We are now in orbit. For the first time in nine years, Americans are in space from American soil. So I cannot think of anything better than to talk to our next guest about a show that I dearly, dearly love. Uh, I'm very honored to be talking to Maxwell Jenkins. I, I don't know if he goes by Max, but he's he's coming out in Good Joe Bell with Mark Wahlberg and Connie Britton, who I have a massive crush on, so I'm happy that he's doing that. But he's also the heart and soul of Netflix's Lost in Space, which is the reboot, of course, of the Irwin Allen series of the 1960s. And boy, uh, Will Robinson, I can't wait to talk to him. So give a great round of applause to Mr. Maxwell Jenkins. Maxwell, do you go by Max or Maxwell? Anything is good. My friends call me Max, so you can call me Max. All right, Max, thank you very much. First of all, thank you for being here. And it's amazing that I'm talking to you right as America herself has made it back to space. I know. I was actually, okay, I uh, full honesty, uh, like a minute before I got on here, like I had been watching the sh uh, watching Dude, so was I. <laughs> So I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And then they brought me in just right now. And I was like, oh God, I got to put this away. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I, you know, we only have half an hour and everybody wants to hear from you. Uh, you know, reading a little bit about you, uh, you started performing when you were three because your dad was in the circus? Is yeah, that so my mom and my dad, they we run a circus here in Chicago, uh, but we've torn um, from all around the world. We've gone to yeah. Montreal. All and they they used to play in Europe. I remember they did actually a festival in Germany. I remember hearing stories about it with this uh, really cool band called Liquid Soul. Um, I don't know if you heard of them, but um, they're really great. Um, and so I kind of grew up uh, surrounded by these amazing musicians and performers from all yeah. over the world. So was it something that obviously you, it was in your blood? You were born into a performing family and you've been a performer ever since and working on your craft you're like many people are just starting out in your career their careers but you've been you've been doing this for a very long time yeah i mean well actually when i i didn't really plan on being an actor i was i was always like doing circus and that was and music those were my two things and then when i was about eight years old actually um my mom was an actress but my parents didn't want me in the business so like it's bad business for kids you don't <laughs> want to be in it and then a vet i think her agent was like, you know what, why don't we just send him out th for this interview? So I went out for an interview once, and then the next thing I knew, I was on a plane to LA for a screen test. So it, it kind of just went from there. But yeah, I started out in the circus, so I've been performing ever since I was practically born. Amazing. Well, I I grew up a big geek, and you've been in two shows now, Sensate, that the Wachowskis created and uh michael straczynski who was from babylon 5 worked on obviously and now you're in lost in space i have to say lost in space is a tremendous tremendous show uh i and i i just i love it so much and i think what's so great about it is your your ensemble cast you and and your parents and the, the robinson family how did you come to get the job how was it a, an audition i mean how'd you find yourself on that show yeah, I mean, so that's actually a funny story because I almost didn't, like, wasn't even going to be Will Robinson. Um, so I came home from school one day. I go to my public school uh, a few blocks away, and I'm walking. I was actually unicycling, I think, because I used to unicycle. Of course you did. The circus. Right? Um, so I come home, and I walk in. I walk upstairs because I'm like, hey, Mom, how you doing? I'm back from school. And I see the script on on the desk. So I'm I'm reading through it, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. There, I, I get a, the little kid gets a robot best friend and gets to fly a spaceship. Like growing up as a sci-fi fan and especially like an Iron Giant fan, um, oh, I was like, such a good movie. oh my god, ET. Um, I also, even though it's not sci-fi, I'm pretty fond of the Black Stallion. So like gr growing up with surrounded by these movies and interests, I was like, this is the perfect show. Um, and she goes. Oh yeah, well, I mean, I got that two weeks ago, um, but we passed on it because it it takes you away from home too long, and I was like, "What? <laughs> what?" So she's like, "I mean, we can call and see if it's too if it's not too late." So 
I went on tape for it and then, and it kind of just went from there. And I met Zach and, um, and Burke and Matt, and we really kind of hit it off from there. And now I'm Will Robinson. <laughs> you are Will, and you're a fantastic Will Robinson. And you're really, your performance is really, I think, the heart, a heart of the show. And the show has a lot of heart. I mean, we don't see, like, I, it's funny to say this about, because I love sci-fi, but I love the wholesome family nature of Lost in Space. And I'm the first guy that wants to see blood and guts and laser fire and aliens tearing people to shreds. But I think what's so great about your show is it is such a family. The bond that you all have is so great. What is it like working with your, your fellow actors? Is it does is it the same, like to watch the show, is it the same to make the show? Do you guys get along and is is everybody like they are on camera? Like, the, do you have that familial atmosphere on set? Yeah, I mean, I feel like since from the beginning, we kind of hit it off. Um, we It didn't take long to really bond. And people on the show, I feel like, are, are cast really perfectly. They, they embody who they are in a sense. Right. Um, like, Molly and Toby really do become kind of like the parents on set. And um, Toby, like, even though he does play a super, like, intense navy seal guy you right. kind of john crack a few jokes here and there and that is definitely an aspect that toby has even though in real life toby is a huge jokester um uh and me and parker parker is i i really call parker my aunt even though we don't get along in the show that well um in real life me and parker are super close and ignacio is like my big brother like we text every other day if not every day <laughs> right well, I mean, let me ask you, you know, one of the things about the show that I love so much is that the the danger, literally, danger, Will Robinson, it gets piled on. I mean, it gets to the point where you, you break a sweat watching the show because it gets so, so tense. Um, when you guys are making it, you it, it seems to be like it's a pretty big production. I mean, there's a lot of effects work. There's a lot of, of set pieces. You're on location a lot of the time, too, if you're not in on a space station or, or in the Jupiter two or something. Is it a hard show for you because you have a lot of the responsibility of, of carrying the weight? I mean, really th there's a lot of the show that revolves around you. Is it, is it tough? Is it a grind? Is it hard I, to make? I mean, I would like, I definitely, I, I feel like it is a hard, it, it's really hard work, but without like the crew and our, my amazing castmates, um, they really make it, they make the show what it is. Because without without the crew, um, we wouldn't get anything done. It really does take a village to make this, to make the show what it is. So right. I feel like, yes, it, it, it's hard work. And we do film in some like pretty intense locations. Like they're filming in Vancouver. Vancouver is arguably my favorite city in the world. Um, but it rains a lot there. And we were filming there during the rainy season. So we once went like, I think it was something like, oh God, it must've been like 40 something days without seeing the sun. It was intense. <laughs> it was the rainiest season they had had since like the 1980s, which for me is a long time ago. So, <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I would say that it, it has its challenges, but with, but with the crew there, it makes it super fun and really enjoyable. Right. Now, how long does a season, like you've done two seasons now, do you shoot the whole season? Do you go into production and shoot everything, all the episodes at once? Or is it broken up where you go to location and then you go back to the, the sound stage? I mean, how, how long do you work on a season for? Yeah, so um, in so when we're filming in um, season one, when we were filming season one, we did it all in order. So we would do episode one, episode two, episode three. Wow. Well, um, generally in order. We would have to go back for some reshoots. Actually, for the tree scene from episode one, yeah, we filmed that five times over the course of like six or seven months. Um, that was pretty intense. Like we once filmed it out in the forest, and it was pretty pretty dang cold. I'm going to be honest with you, right? Because um, it's a night shoot, and we're outside, so it was it was tough. Um, but we also filmed um, that on a soundstage and stuff. But for season two, it was definitely kind of jumbled around. We started with episode six and seven. Then we went to like episode, I want to say one, two, then to episode eight, then to episode three. Um, it was kind of jumbled around in there. Um, but yeah, I would say it, it kind of changes around depending on what you have to reshoot and stuff like that. 
Right. Um, when you were doing episode two, had there's a lot of water in the first half of episode two. Was was that? How did you guys do that? Were you ever? Were, were you in tanks? Were you out on the water for real? Like it looked like it was pretty harrowing at certain points. So I I was lucky. Me and Toby got lucky because we both get hurt in the episodes. So we're we're below deck for a large portion of it. Right. But, um, so we kind of did a combination of tank, VFX, and um, actually like being out on top of the Jupiter 2. So they built the top of the Jupiter 2 and they put masts up. Well, they, they green screened the top part of the mast, but there were parts of it that were up and they uh, did the steering wheel and everything. Um, so we did, and they would, they had these, they had like six water cannons that they would shoot at you and you would be like getting hit with a wave. Like, and in those spacesuits, like, it's not the easiest to move around. Right. So you're, you're being hit and you're like, oh. But thank goodness we, we got these, um, we have these, like, kind of boots. And they're actual, like, really, like, great hiking boots that we wear. The, our spacesuit boots. Right. So walking around that deck wasn't too bad. Um, and then Molly, uh, Taylor, Mina, and Parker, they actually had to, so they... They had to film out there at night a few times, yeah. and I cannot imagine. Oh my gosh, they were, I remember like being at a lunch break and, um, or staying after just to like get it, getting out of my wardrobe and stuff, and I'll just see them out there just getting hit with water. I'm like, oh my God, they're like superheroes. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, obviously I've got to ask you about the robot itself. I mean, I know it's a combination of things to bring it to life, but I guess to start with, is it difficult to create for you as an actor an emotional bond with something that isn't really real? <laughs> like, you you know, you're supposed to have this relationship with this robot, and of course, you know, it's special effects and people working it, and is that hard? Is it hard to, like, elicit, uh, to bring up emotion from deep inside of you as an actor? I mean, it is challenging, but um, I would say that, oh, thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Sophia. I like the shirt too. Um, uh, but I would say that it is, it is pretty challenging. It was challenging in the beginning, I would say. Right. Um, like getting used to acting off, like sometimes it's just a tennis ball on a stick. Um, like for yeah. the tree scene, it's just a tennis ball on a stick and they're like, great, cry and act afraid of that thing. Um, so I would say it was difficult in the beginning, but then I kind of put the connection between um, me, between the robot and my two rescued pip. Well, actually three rescued pipples now, but back then I had two. Um, so what are, their what are their names? What are your pipples names? Well, back then it was uh, Rosie Ray and Junebug, and recently Junebug actually passed away. But we oh, did man. adopt um, two new puppies, um, Ricky and Bobby, for any Talladega Nights fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they're amazing. They're actually downstairs. They're taking a nap. Um, but I kind of put it together because the robot is kind of this fierce, kind of scary looking, looking, looking creature, but it ends up being a great best friend. So, sometimes the friends that you never had and, um, really a great a protector. They're always loyal. They're there for you. And yeah. that's what, that's what my two pitbulls are. So I feel like drawing that connection made it easier to act off of the off of the robot. That what a great I mean that's a great insight in in terms of the the craft of of acting. I I thought that was that that's good. That's good. So when you're there when you're working with do you because a lot of people don't understand that you you can't work a full 12 hours, can you? Or no. Um, because I'm a minor, so luck, uh, thank goodness SAG has really great child labor laws, and they're really great about making sure I get my school, making sure I'm not overworked, you know. And that would be the Screen Actors Guild that protects yes. protects actors. And you have to go to school on set, don't you? I do. Um, so school is three hours a day, but you can get it in like 20-minute increments. So it's it's a bit challenging to like do that right. and um, like – one one minute you're being chased by a horde of angry robots, then the next minute you're doing trig. So <laughs> I hated trigonometry. It's a bit it's a bit challenging. I hated it. So we've got you're gonna do a third and final season 
of the show, which is a bummer. I'm like, why, why did they cancel after three seasons? I mean, I know it's, I, I wish I could go on because I love the show, but where where are you in terms of, produ- well, obviously you're not in production at all because nobody is now, but how far along is season three? Have all the scripts been written? Have you shot anything from season three yet? Yeah, so um, we, we, I actually, being an actor, I feel like we're kind of like the last to know. Right, <laughs> right, um, and you are. We are. Like, I actually, filming season two, um, I got the script for episode seven two days before we went to go film it. Um, so I was kind of like, whoa. Um, but but um, from what I've heard and what I've what I've talked with Zach, our showrunner, about, and Burke and Matt, our creators and writers, um, they, from, season, from what I've heard is like season two is going to be really epic and it's going to be like well worth the wait. Um, uh, till 2021 is what they're hoping for. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know much, but like some questions that I want answered are like, w- what's the Fortuna? Like, why is it out here? What happened to this planet? Did the right. robot come? Like, I, I genuinely want to know because being a sci fi fan, I'm, I'm a fan of the show. Right. So, um, I, I kind of consider myself like, watching watching lost in space i kind of lose track that i'm in the show and i'm like oh man i'm such a big fan of this show like who's in it like that kind of thing yeah so i i there are some questions that i want answered that hopefully matt and burke answer which i'm sure they will because they're phenomenal writers well i have the same questions that you have by the way uh sabrina mora says you're her idol and she loves you so much I'm oh my god! Reading, I'm just reading that on the live chat, so I figured, why not throw that your way? Thank um, you so much. Now, now, I'm curious when you finally see the finished show. Obviously, what people a lot of the time don't understand is is actors come, you do your work, and you leave. But then it, there's so much post production time from the time you've actually shot the show to when you can actually see it. Do you are do you ever get to go? Do they invite you to the edit bay? Do they ever get to sh- do they show you things, or do you have to wait? before you see it, maybe Netflix has a premiere. Do you have to wait till it all drops on Netflix so you can binge it with everybody else? Right, so um, obviously like sometimes when I'm visiting, um, like when I'm in LA, cause I, I live in Chicago. Speaking of which, are you guys at Chicago Comics right now? I, I'm in Los Angeles right now. Oh, okay, okay. Well, anyways, I, I, I remember um, the guy before said that he was at Chicago Comics. Yeah, he, so Jeff Garland, I was at yeah. Chicago Comics. Um, uh yesterday picking up um a manga because i've been getting into um more of that uh manga and japanese kind of pop culture stuff yeah um what anyways, was yeah. it what what manga would you oh, pick up samurai eight samurai eight yeah um yeah, yeah yeah such a great i started reading yesterday i'm like oh my gosh it's really good because i'm a huge naruto fan um and the guy who created naruto did samurai eight so um i was really interested in that but anyways um I sometimes I'll visit out in LA and I'll stop by the VFX studio to like get a sneak peek at what they're what they're doing. But like these guys are really working up until like the moment before it launches. So, (laughs) um, so I the the first time I'll really see the finished product in its entirety is when everyone else sees it. Right. Like I stayed up because it launches at. 2 a.m. in the morning here in Chicago because it launches at midnight Pacific time. Yeah. Um, so I, I, me and my me and my sister and pre-corona times, my friends, because you'd have a sleepover, they'd come over and we would we would wait till 2 a.m. to watch it. <laughs> Did you stay up all night and binge as many episodes as you could? <laughs> so I didn't because I I made it till episode seven and then I was like, you know what? I I know what happens next and I fell asleep. I'm gonna be honest because um, it was like, <laughs> but it's got to be like the crack of dawn then so right. i was like i'm gonna go to bed <laughs> um but then i woke up at, and then like a couple hours later i was binging it episode 10 actually was my favorite episode because we got to work with david nutter so i was yeah. super stoked to getting to that episode yeah i'm a huge fan i mean he goes all the way back to he was directing x files episodes in the 90s right he's directed game of thrones i mean he's one of the great great sci-fi fantasy and even horror directors working in television the guy's a master oh he's amazing yeah and um working with david was really 
was really spectacular. I learned so much on that on that episode. And um, actually, filming season two, I, uh, he wasn't a director for season two with us because schedules didn't work out, I guess. But I actually got to. Um, he he came and visited um, Vancouver, and we we he stopped by, and we had brunch, and it was really good to reconnect with David because yeah. we're in contact today. David's a really good friend. So, well, that I mean, that's great to hear. Now, you, I guess, I can ask you. Do we only have to talk about Lost in Space? I mean, can I ask no. you about uh, let's this new movie that you have coming out, working with Mark Wahlberg and Connie Britton, who right. I've, I, I've I was I've been madly in love with her since Friday Night Lights. What's your new movie about, and what what can you tell us about it? Yeah, um, so this new movie is um, based on a true story um, about Jaden Bell, um, and he is a teenager in Oregon. And he is tragically bullied for being openly gay. And unfortunately, he takes his own life. Um, so I play his younger brother. And Jaden's played by the fantastic Reed Miller, um, who we really bonded over. He's like a brother to me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really an important story about how, um, how, how the family deals with it, the events leading up, and um, all of it. Um, and I feel like... Um, you know, it's an important story for the times we're in now because we really need to teach tolerance and accepting accepting Absolutely. others, even though they're different. I think that's really important. So, um, yeah, it's 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 a really great um, film, and the script was amazing. I got actually got to talk with the real Joseph Bell, Jaden's younger brother. Wow, and he is really an amazing guy, and he was like. You know, there's some stuff that, if you don't mind, I'd like you to talk to the writers about. And the writers were totally, uh, the director, uh, Ronaldo Green, was totally open to um, incorporating it in. And it was just a really amazing process. I, I, I hadn't really done a film for years since then. So being able to, being able to do another film and being able to do a film like that was truly an amazing experience. And what was it like? I mean, I have to ask. You know, I've been I've seen Mark Wahlberg uh, growing up myself. I mean, he used to be Marky Mark, Marky Mark from the Funky Bunch, and he's turned into such a great actor. And he's producing now. And what was it like working with him? Yeah, um, Mark is really. I mean, first of all, an amazing actor, and another, and on the other hand, an amazing teacher, and most importantly, an amazing human being. Um, he's so kind from like the day that I got there, we were filming a pretty challenging scene and, um, it was my first day. I was a bit nervous. I hadn't done a film in a while since right. I had done one with Gerard Butler, who, uh, who is really like, uh, still a great friend. Um, I was talking with him the other day, but, um, I was a bit nervous and he really welcomed me into the, into the crew and into the cast. And, um, yeah, he was an amazing human being. And actually I was... I was a bit intimidated too because I'm a huge Mark Wahlberg fan. The Fighter is one of my favorite movies. So good. So good. So good. Um, actually, two of my favorite boxing movies. Well, Rocky, my all-time favorite, but um, The Fighter and um, Southpaw with Jake Gyllenhaal. Another great movie. Another great movie. Jake Gyllenhaal, producer on the show, uh, on the movie. Um, I, unfortunately, I didn't get to meet him, but hopefully one day because Mysterio. I mean, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge, huge. Uh, you know, if you haven't seen a movie called Nightcrawler, Jake Gyllenhaal okay. stars in that ama amazing performance. Well, let me ask you: like, when you get to meet, when you finally work with somebody that you're a fan of, do you ever like just totally fanboy out? Like, is it hard? Because you have to be like, yeah, we're working together, we're on the same movie together. You got to be all cool. Yeah. But do you ever like take somebody aside and go, dude, I gotta, I gotta tell you. I loved you in this. Do you ever do yeah. that? I mean, yeah, but like it's more like <laughs> instead of being like, dude, I gotta tell you this, I'm not a cool person. So it's more like, oh my god, I love you. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it starts playing and I'm like, I can't talk, I can't talk, I can't talk. Um, so like for like a sci-fi in instance, um, Mark Hamill came to our premiere. Oh my god. Cool. <laughs> well, wow. because so Bill Mooney is um who played the original Will Robinson yeah. is I'm proud to call him a really amazing friend and um, mentor. And he, I don't think that um, the way my version of Will Robinson was portrayed, it wouldn't be the same without him. Because right. when he came and visited set, I mean, first of all, he made Will Robinson who he is. Um, second of all, like he, 
he really passed the torch in a really generous way. And he also gave me some really insightful, insightful pieces into Will Robinson. Like Will Robinson can never, can never be negative. He always has to be that kind of ray of positivity and always uh, has to be hope. Um, like they're in a pretty dire situation and Will Robinson is kind of that hope um, in that world. And Bill really brought that in. Um, but I remember having dinner with Bill um, like a week before the premiere because I was in I was in L.A. We had just gotten back from going to Dubai to Tokyo, no, Tokyo to Dubai, then to L.A. And I was having dinner with dinner with Bill at his place. And he goes, so, um, Max, I have some news for you um, at the premiere. Um, I, I invited Mark. I'm like, Mark, who's, who's Mark? And he goes, oh, Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker. And I go, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. So I, I mean, I will always be in debt to Bill for that. And Mark was such a cool dude. He actually cried. I remember sitting in front of him and he cried at the end of the first episode and going, okay, now I know we have a pretty good show. If Mark Hamill can cry about this show, I know it's, I know it's pretty good. Wow. So I was like, Oh my, and Mark Hamill was such an amazing dude, like so kind. But I remember meeting him and being like, hey, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm a really big man. Like I'm getting giddy just thinking about that moment. It was so cool. Well, isn't it great, though, when someone like Mark Hamill can watch your work and say, I, I love this. It made me cry. I mean, that's like the best thing when someone sees something that you've made, isn't it? When they, they tell you how much they like it. Yeah. I mean, the two biggest kind of compliments that I've ever gotten were when Bill Mooney um, pulled me aside and said, um, I don't even know if Bill remembers this, um, but Bill, um, but Bill, he goes, Max, I just have to say you're doing a great job as Will Robinson and I couldn't be prouder. And I mean, that's when I was just, I was like, oh my God, he thinks I'm doing good. He thinks I'm doing good. Um, so like that was, that kind of like was like kind of a passing the torch moment for me. Right. Um, and Bill will always be Will Robinson. Um, he will always be the Will Robinson. But um, it's nice to know that I have his support. And then the other moment was when Mark Hamill cried at the end of the first episode. That, it's amazing. Now, I got I to gotta tell you, if knowing that you know Bill Mooney, have you ever watched his Twilight Zone episodes? He was oh, my in the God. I thought, but I, I've seen all of these photos from him on that on the show and i've i've met you, a few of his uh, cast members and stuff like that you have to watch his episode called it's a good life it's a good where, life where it's a good life where he plays the let's just say not a very nice kid okay <laughs> and okay. it's only like 25 minutes long you know but it, it's so you know early golden age of it, the twilight zone ran from 59 to 64 so it's black and white Mm -hmm. And like the first season of Lost in Space. And he is phenomenal. <laughs> when you watch it, it's like, this is one of the greatest performances I've ever seen. And so that way you can talk to him about it because it's pretty famous that, that he, I, you'll love it. I um just want, like, I know we're running short on time, but I just wanted to say, what was it like working on Star Trek? Like you were, you, like you were well, kind of a... I worked, I did, I was a, I was a documentarian. So I got to tell you what I did for the 25th anniversary of Star Trek. I got to sit down and interview the entire cast, the entire crew of the, of the Enterprise D Patrick oh Stewart. God. So there was, there I was oh my moderating a round table conversation. I could barely, we were doing this in Calgary up in Canada. I could oh barely God. speak. Uh, oh yeah. It's great. It's beautiful. And I'm just sitting there like, because I was, I did all the documentaries on the making of Star Trek: The Next Generation that were on the Blu-ray. So I had to sit down. Oh, wow. and these were long-form documentaries, so I would sit down with each cast member for hours at a time and interview them. Wow. And then when we were going to do this, this I said we should get everybody together to have this roundtable conversation. And and they're all like, "Well, you should host it." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I'm not an actor. I mean, I'm not." They're like, "Yeah, but you know everything about Star Trek. They'll love you. You've already been talking to them." And it was like, it was, it was my little kid self that has been watching Star Trek my whole life, when I got to sit down, I'm like, oh my God. But I have to tell you, I did write and direct a movie that starred William Shatner called Free Enterprise. It's a comedy. Oh my God. And, oh my God. And I, it was like, William Shatner, Captain Kirk is my uh, my idol. <laughs> you know, and I had to sit down and compose yeah, yeah. myself and directing him and telling him what to do. And it was, 
we could never tell him we were Star Trek fans because then he would th think we were freaks and he wouldn't have taken it seriously. Yeah. <laughs> but he was amazing to work with. It was amazing to direct William Shatner. It was a dream come true. But another dream come true was meeting you, Max, because oh, I love God. your show <laughs> and it was so much fun to talk to you and I wish you all the best success. I can't wait to see your new movie. I was so honored. when You know, when I saw your name, I'm like, oh, I can't, I'd, I'd love to talk to this guy. So your show is amazing, and I know we have to go now. But thank you very much for being on this show. Thank you so much for having me. This was really amazing. Thank so you, fun. Max and Robert. We cannot thank you both enough. I got to say, Max, you got the most views of entire mainframe ComCon. Your fan base is so loyal. So big shout out to oh. all Max's fans who are in the chat. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much. I couldn't be here without you guys. So I love you.